this is not something uh, only a stone. It is something living. Yeah. It, it is something that you can see how people were mounting all these monuments, giving them a form, giving them uh, an, we can interpret what they mean, what they, why they are giving such an importance to the religion that comes from India to Cambodia. So uh, some people just say that when they come to Siem Reap and they, they visit the uh, temple, they, some, not, not all of the people, they always say that just a stone, that is why I just want to, to, to yes. ask you. And then yeah. many experts say that um, stone of Angkor have their have their soul you know they speak uh, they speak to people with uh, based on uh, i mean based on uh, picture based on sculpture on the wall or something so, so my question to you is that stone are stone or maybe a stone have have uh, soul uh, so, yeah the stone are speaking you have to understand that for us in archaeology when we find a site this site when we study it in terms of its construction, in terms of its material, in terms of its decoration, it's speaking, it's explaining how those who came before us, our ancestors, because we consider it's human ancestors, it's Cambodian, but it's also part of our human uh, memory. The world. Yeah, uh, your memory, yeah. These sites are not only stones. Stones is means they're only a, a stone, but when you have this stone built in such very fine way with towers with the uh, uh, gopura with sculptures this is not something uh, only a stone it is something living yeah it, it is something that you can see how people were mounting all these monuments giving them a form giving them uh, an we can interpret what they mean, what they, why they are giving such an importance to the religion that comes from India to Cambodia, which is called Buddhism, which is again a, a, a religion which is having billions of peoples belonging to this religion. So the, regarding looking at this monument, it's not only looking at the stone with the color uh, 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 reddish or brown. No, it is speaking to the people. It has a value and it is linked with what we call also at UNESCO the intangible heritage. Something that it's not stone, it's not something concrete, it's the value which is behind the stone. So that's why it, it, you have to say in your um, you know, descriptions in the, the for the in, tourist operators, yeah. you are not going to see stones, you are going to see living monuments. Because up to now, and we have, uh, of course, very good relations with the monks, with the Buddhist monks, with the, uh, you know, the, these companies which mm. are still worshipping. You can see flowers, uh, offerings. This is a living heritage. It's not only a stone and then you see like this you see stone and you and you know i think that we have when you are mentioning um, uh, stone uh, speak or sp uh, stone are speaking yeah. and then you mention also um, you mention also a living monument Absolutely. what what does it mean uh, exactly it, a living it, uh, monument a living monument is a monument which has still the value of giving something to the human presence today we see people worshipping inside the monument. So that means that this monument is not representing only the uh, accumulation of stones. Yeah. It's a, a, an accumulation of stones which have a message, which have something to say. So we archaeologists, we consider that stones are speaking. So they are not only uh, uh, not living place, they are living place. So we consider that the park of Angkor with the villagers which are, who are living in the, in the village are in a, uh, 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 an area which has hundreds of temples which are considered by the world as exceptional, 
which are considered by the Cambodians as their heritage and which has the value for their beliefs, for their traditions, for their memories. Absolutely. And some people said that, uh, you know, uh, people around the world, uh, specifically Cambodian people, when they have something, they just, they have something, I mean, but they have bad thing or good thing, they come to temple to uncle and they bow, uh, they worship. And it means that everyone tell everything to uncle exactly. and then uncle itself tell its story to the world. Is yes. it correct? That's an this is absolutely correct. And this is something also, what is also exceptional. You don't have in many countries in the world the national flag with a monument. Cambodia, the national flag of Cambodia, is representing Angkor Wat, the three towers of Angkor Wat. This is, this is another exceptional value. It, Absol it has a absolutely, meaning. Absolutely. It, is, it has a meaning for the nationals. This is our, our country and it is the representativity of this country is the temples that we have in Angkor. Why the sentence, I mean, I, I just raise again and again. Why it is said that everyone tell everything to Uncle and Uncle tell everything, its story to the world? Why, why? Absolutely. You know, you are, today you have millions of visitors. There are visitors coming, having no ID. So we are, of course, working with our colleagues. And this is also part of the ICC meeting to disseminate the information about the civilization of Khmer and to show that this is not a one year or two years, this is centuries of presence of works, of uh, uh, valorization of the, of the land, of agriculture, of uh, uh, irrigation. This is the whole life. It's, these people, they were like us, they were living every day and having to feed the family, uh, to, uh, to, to, to put the rice in the field rice, to verify uh, the water when there is, uh, uh, you know, the, the season of uh, dry season, uh, rainy season, etc. So we have to explain that this is a process, historical process, and it is the testimony of this life during centuries is done by manuscripts, is done by inscriptions. We have a lot of yeah. Khmer inscriptions which are uh, giving a, a narrative, a story. So when you are uh, in front of a temple, you have a narrative, you have a story. Of course, it depends on the uh, training that you have in your country uh, to understand uh, all these aspects. And as I said, ICC is, and uh, in particular, the administration of Apsara, uh, under uh, Her Excellency uh, 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 Humpel, uh, hum, hum, with, with His Excellency Humpel as Director General and the Minister Her, of, Her Excellency uh, von Sak Sakona, we are always discussing how we can show every uh, ICC, a, and you, probably you listened to me yesterday when it, it, I spoke about Un Sambor Prekuk and the importance of new discoveries. Each time when we come, there are new discoveries explaining how people, Khmer, were living in the 8th century, 9th century. What, who were the kings who were, you know, builders? These kings were builders. When, they were, when there was the first kingdom in Koker or in Sambor Prekuk, uh, and then it comes to uh, Angkor, the kings were builders. They were working with the religious community to leave a temple as the testimony of their beliefs. So when you come from Asia, you can understand better because you have already the Buddhist tradition. So if they come yeah. from India, Japan, Indonesia, etc. When they come from Europe, they need more explanation. And we are suggesting to have in front of each of these very important sites, Koker, Sambor Prikuk, Prihavir, Angkor, interpretation centers where you go and you have explanation. There is one which is very nicely done in Bantesrei. 
in, in okay. Pontesre, when you arrive, if you don't know anything, this interpretation center is giving you uh, the information. information yes. And this information then makes you understand better what you see that's on, which are speaking. 